the, the strain in the relationship is, it's, it's well known that uh, Rudolf Ferber was, um, felt very strongly that some of the people who were quite influential in the Israeli government in, a, in the earlier days of Israel, and especially the 1950s and maybe going into the 60s, were among the small number of Jews who had uh, come on that famous train from Budapest to Switzerland, in which uh, uh, close to 2,000 lives were rescued by some kind of deal that was made with the Nazis. It's a controversial episode in Holocaust history. And he felt the interpretation that he placed on this famous or notorious, depending on your perspective, on the Kestner train, was that these people had uh, made a deal with the Nazis at the cost of other Jewish lives, and then ended up in Palestine, which became Israel, and then became influential in the Israeli government. And this made Rudy, uh, Rudy say things that were sharply critical of the Israeli government. And there were people in the Jewish community of Vancouver who heard or heard about some of these remarks, found it, they were unable to contextualize it. Rudolf Ferber was a man who had a lot to be bitter about, considering his history and what had happened. And instead of contextualizing it, they said, oh, this man is critical of the Israeli government, and that created uh, some ill will towards him in some circles. And uh, I would say the attitude changed. First of all, I think in general, people became more perceptive of the way in which uh, certain experiences during the Holocaust could shape the way certain survivors felt about certain things that were happening. I think there was a, a recognition that one shouldn't make simplistic judgments about what Holocaust survivors say or believe. And uh, secondly, uh, people came to realize that he really was a heroic figure in the history of the Holocaust. And a, a turning point, which I had the privilege of being connected with, was uh, took place in uh, the mid-90s when Rudolf Verba gave the uh, commemorative lecture, the commemorative address at the annual Vancouver Kristallnacht commemoration, Can you? which was compellingly uh, w widely advertised. A lot of people within the Vancouver community, Jewish and not Jewish, learned about him for the first time when the um, lecture was being advertised. Uh, contrary to what people may have expected, it was not uh, his own story. He did chose not to tell the story of his escape and the report. He decided to make this the, a lecture uh, reflecting some of the research that he himself had done on the uh, scale of the theft of Jewish property by the Nazis and their collaborators all over the countries that the Nazis, that the Germans occupied. He had done a fair bit of reading and on that subject and he wanted to present his argument that racial ideology was to some extent simply a smokescreen for the grasping efforts of the Nazis and all their collaborators in a lot of countries to grab whatever Jewish property they could, and it was a very compelling address.